I guess we should begin. Uh, I just learned that I'm uh, the one who is supposed to be welcoming you. Uh, and uh, I have no idea what I'm supposed to say other than welcome. So welcome. Uh, it's uh, been great to see currently 39 people uh, attending this uh, first uh, session of the uh, TLA Plus uh, workshop, and I'm happy to uh, see you all here. I can quickly zoom past your photographs and uh, see, in fact, you are sitting in front of the uh, your uh, cameras. Uh, I just noticed Ron Pressler. Hi, Ron. Uh, Ron, I believe, is one of the first speakers tomorrow, and uh, I've watched his talk, and I hope you do too, and it's a really neat talk. But today, uh, we have our uh, keynote speaker, Dharma Shukla, uh, who is a technical fellow at Microsoft working on a new AI system called Singularity that I've heard a lot about inside of Microsoft, and you probably haven't. Uh, before that, uh, Dharma was the originator, designer, and uh, driving force behind uh, uh, Cosmos DB, which uh, is a global uh, database that Microsoft introduced, I believe it was two or three years ago. Uh, and it's a really cool system and uh, really important and, uh, to Microsoft, and it's, it's rapidly growing. Uh, it's widely used both uh, inside Microsoft and uh, by Microsoft's Azure customers. Dharma joined Microsoft in 1999 and contributed to various products and services, including in addition to Cosmos, Azure itself, Live Mesh, and, and others. Uh, he specializes in distributed systems and earned his uh, master's degree in computer science from uh, the University of Washington. So uh, that's about all I have to say for introduction, other than I'm sure it's going to be a great talk. Uh, and I guess uh, we can uh, we can begin now, Dharma. Thank you, thank you, Leslie, for uh, warm and kind words, and thanks everyone for uh, attending uh, this morning, or uh, whichever time zone you are in right now. Um, so I thought today I'll talk about uh, my experiences in uh, applying TLA Plus in. Um, uh, the last couple of projects uh, I have been working on at Microsoft and um, especially um, talk about how we incorporated TLA plus in the engineering culture. I'm assuming this is a group of uh, uh, TLA plus uh, practitioners. Uh, so, um, you know, you would all be relate, able to relate to, um, um, uh, you know, spreading the TLA plus in the community and how uh, you know you 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 can incorporate it uh, in uh, the engineering teams uh, or your teams that you're working on. So uh, the outline of my talk is uh, I'll talk about the couple of uh, a couple of systems uh, to give you the background of the uh, complexity uh, and the kind of problems that uh, we were trying to solve. Uh, in these systems and how we applied TLA plus uh, uh, both uh, uh, as part of uh, the, the, the design of different subsystems of uh, these larger services, but uh, also um, in, in terms of customer facing artifacts like uh, the service level agreements uh, that we offer to customers and uh, precisely specifying those uh, agreements in terms of uh, TLA plus specs. I'll talk about um, you know things that have worked successfully. Um, uh, of all the things that we've tried, I've uh, you know 
uh, harvested a few of these uh, lessons, uh, uh, which we which I learned, and you know things that uh, were successful in, uh, especially in uh, medium to large uh, teams. And then uh, a quick uh, summary. So, um, in terms of um, uh, example systems, I'll start with uh, uh, Cosmos database. Um, uh, it started as uh, uh, an internal uh, project called Project Florence uh, because it was uh, prototyped um, in the beautiful city of Florence and um, in 2010. And um, we, it was a very unique project because we, uh, it started, you know, grassroots within a, a large company like Microsoft. And um, the vision that we had back then was to create a globally distributed database um, um, uh, and, and the motivation for that was to meet the needs of internal applications at Microsoft. Over time, it grew uh, in 2017, uh, we launched it um, uh, externally and it is a ring zero service, which means that it is at the bottom of Azure stack. Um, um, and uh, uh, you know, many, many other services, uh, both inside Azure, uh, in Microsoft, including uh, things like Teams, uh, you know, and other parts of uh, uh, Microsoft, they use it heavily. And um, also, external customers uh, of Azure use it um, and for for mission critical workloads. Um, when we started out, uh, we had um, um, a, 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 you know a, a very stringent set of uh, requirements from the large scale applications uh, inside Microsoft. Uh, I'll just enumerate a few of these goals uh, for, for you to appreciate the, the, uh, the constraints that we were working against. So we wanted to um, elastically scale throughput. Um, as a horizontally sharded database, uh, you know, uh, the, the, there is always a, a need to scale storage but we also had the, the challenge of scaling throughput uh, and that too elastically uh, across any place in the world. So a customer, um, a, a retail customer may want, um, you know, uh, a 5 million uh, rights per second in one region of Azure and uh, has some other application or the same customer wants, you know, 3 million uh, reads in another region. And then as time passes on, they uh, these uh, these um, reads and writes have to fluctuate uh, uh, elastically uh, based on the the specific workload, and we have to do this uh, elasticity, elastic scale up and scale down of throughput uh, uh, um, within a tight budget. Uh, it, it cannot take uh, uh, long periods of time, so partition splits and merge, uh, and those things have to happen uh, really instantly. Uh, 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 while the database uh, as a single system image distributed across uh, many, many regions. Um, the other thing was that we wanted to deliver uh, stringent SLAs on uh, uh, latency for reads and writes uh, at uh, P99 uh, across anywhere in the world. And so uh, that meant that, um, you know, we had to navigate the, the, the CAP uh, theorem and uh, that meant uh, we had to make sure that uh, we can offer um, uh, pragmatic consistency choices to trade off latency, availability, uh, and consistency. Um, and um, in terms of high availability, uh, uh, because it was designed as a multi-master system, um, uh, customers expected uh, read and write availability. Uh, it was paramount because Microsoft's billing systems and and many of these mission critical workloads were dependent on it. Um, as I mentioned, we, we, we decided to offer tunable consistency models. Uh, so between linearizable consistency and eventual consistency, you know, intermediate click stops. And I'll, I'll describe how we uh, uh, employed TLA plus um, in uh, defining these consistency levels. And then uh, also equally important was that we, we, we have to operate the service at a, at a really low cost um, so that we can offer it to customers at a, at a lower price point and uh, also save uh, cogs for um, internal customers at Microsoft. Um, then uh, because it is a multi-tenant system um, uh, where we densely pack 
um, many, many workloads on the same physical machine and across uh, machines in a cluster and across clusters. Um, we, we have to give not only security isolation uh, across different workloads, but also um, uh, performance isolation. And it, it can get tricky, uh, as you might imagine, uh, when the system is being used for both transactional uh, workloads as well as uh, 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 offline use cases. So um, that also required an additional uh, level of constraints in terms of how we isolate workloads uh, so that um, every tenant uh, feels that they got, um, you know, effectively dedicated cloud capacity. But in reality, we are multiplexing, you know, thousands of tenants across the same physical capacity and still making everyone, uh, all customers feel that uh, they're the only ones who has this sort of uh, illusion of infinite capacity um, uh, at their disposal. Uh, we, we customers wanted to evolve their schemas uh, very, very uh, rapidly in an agile manner. So uh, we and and they wanted um, you know SQL-like queries over uh, uh, semi-structured data. So that also caused a lot of challenges in the uh, design of uh, the the core database engine. And um, uh, so against these constraints, we had to uh, design the system uh, and deliver it in uh, in um, in the time frame that uh, we had set out to. So um, as you can imagine, a very uh, tight uh, design space uh, which we had to navigate, and and we started um, in 2010. Um, you know, um, millions of lines of uh, C C++ code later. Um, uh, we built the system, uh, and and it is uh, it is uh, proven to be a, a very robust system that uh, many many other uh, customers and uh, uh, other services have taken dependency. In terms of uh, the the just a quick very very high level overview of the system model, you know there are many many tenants of Azure. Every customer is a is a tenant. Um, they create uh, tables, collections, graphs um, uh, within a database. Um, these things uh, effectively translate into uh, what we call containers, uh, which are um, you know logical uh, collections of of uh, different entities. Um, and then uh, each container is uh, partitioned in a uh, two-dimensional space. Um, it is partitioned horizontally, uh, like a traditionally traditional uh, horizontally sharded uh, database, uh, but it's also partitioned across uh, uh, regions. Um, and so, uh, the, each each partition uh, is uh, is this uh, circle that you see on the screen, is uh, consists of a replica set, and um, as you can imagine, um, uh, uh, that gives um, high availability. Uh, it it uh, it implements uh, Paxos based uh, replication. Um, there's a there's a leader, uh, so it has uh, you know leader election and the uh, uh, replicated state machine implementation. Uh, leader receives the rights, uh, and because we wanted to, uh, we have a very tight budget of system resources that we want to um, um, optimally use. Uh, we distribute. Uh, those system resources in a in a, a specific budgets of these resources to the leader and the follower. So the and and we route the the writes and the reads such that uh, the system overall is balanced and all the underlying uh, resources are utilized across all the tenants uh, optimally. So reads uh, are are directed towards the the followers. Um, and the and the rights uh, go exclusively uh, to the leader. There's a, a, a special uh, a follower. It's called XP leader. It is responsible for replicating it cross partitions. And um, the 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 next level of of uh, agreement that we have to build is across partitions in a partition set. So just like a replica set uh, constitutes a partition. Um, uh, there are multiple partitions, uh, they collectively form a partition set, and uh, that is required for globally distributing uh, these partitions. The same uh, partition is a, is a workhorse abstraction because it's a highly available um, 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 
uh, and a reusable uh, entity. We use it for partition splits, uh, merges, uh, in addition to global replication, uh, uh, cloning partitions on demand, um, as well as uh, streaming uh, on demand. So, um, so in, in, in a nutshell, um, uh, as you can imagine, uh, resource governance, uh, the, the replication protocol is a resource governed protocol, uh, multiple uh, layers of consensus, um, and um, and it, it is it is at at a, at a scale uh, uh, across you know hundreds of thousands of customers, uh, and there are a variety of workloads, and still we have to uh, make sure that all of the guarantees that I described in the in the uh, previous slide, they hold true. Uh, so uh, in, in in this system, we apply TLA plus uh, in, across uh, in in many many parts of the system. But I'll talk about a few uh, notable ones that are uh, externally visible uh, to the user. So uh, the most notable one is uh, is uh, defining the consistency levels. Because um, we are a globally distributed system, we wanted to offer service level agreements, not just for high availability, just like most cloud services do, but we also wanted to provide um, service level agreements for uh, consistency, uh, latency at P99, um, in addition to a high availability. And so um, in, when it comes to consistency, um, uh, as this picture shows, uh, you know there's a it's a wild west of variety of uh, consistency models that have been defined. Um, and what we wanted to do was, and the and the and the and the state of the art um, uh, when we um, started Cosmos DB was, um, you know, on the one extreme uh, strong consistency, or uh, e on the other extreme eventual consistency. And what we wanted to do was we wanted to codify. Um, of, of this uh, you know, wide variety of consistency models, um, the ones that are practically useful to customers. And, and after, after a lot of experiments and, and, uh, and flighting uh, these consistency models with internal workloads, we identified a few of these, which uh, could be precisely specified which uh, whose guarantees could be you know uh, could be you know provided to customers and in a manner that customers intuitively understand those guarantees, and um, and they can build their applications uh, in a in a predictable manner, so they don't have to settle for uh, eventual consistency uh, if uh, uh, they wanted weaker guarantees. They can settle for these other three consistency levels, and. Also, uh, because of the way these consistency uh, levels uh, are implemented, um, it has a, a concrete uh, impact on the on the bill or the pricing model uh, of the system. So, when you um, when you configure your consistency level um, as strong or bounded stainless, uh, you get uh, half the throughput uh, uh, of your reads and writes. Um, uh, for the the for the same price. On the other hand, if you if you configure session or consistent prefix or eventual, you effectively get double the throughput for the same price. So uh, there is a there is a you know uh, uh, a cost difference um, uh, in in making that choice uh, between these consistency levels, and that is um, that also we sort of uh, uh, dissected um, what attributes to this cost. Um, in a multi-tenant setup. And so in order to try out these different consistency models that uh, were uh, that have been there in the in the literature, and then identify the ones that uh, actually are practically useful for customers, uh, we use TLA plus heavily. And, um, and even talking to internal teams and explaining them the consistency uh, models and what they meant uh, to their applications, um, uh, TLA plus was uh, was godsend in in terms of communicating the the the, the guarantees in a in a in a precise manner, and so when we eventually uh, uh, released uh, Cosmos uh, externally, we wrote the TLA plus specs for the five consistency uh, levels that we we ended up exposing to the users and in a manner that um, makes sense for the application user. Uh, 
and not uh, without abstracting away all of the details of the, the implementation of the replication protocol and such. So that's one, uh, 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 you know, concrete customer facing um, uh, artifact um, that happened. Um, we also learned that um, uh, uh, of while TLA plus is awesome in terms of describing um, uh, precisely capturing the design intent and then debugging the design, um, we, we wanted to make sure that whenever there is a violation in, um, in the, in the imp whenever there's a drift between the implementation and the design, uh, we can catch it. So we ended up for the consistency levels uh, and giving SLAs around it, we ended up building a, a consistency checker service, which would uh, you know, maintain a, a, um, the history of uh, all the transactions and, uh, and make sure that um, whenever there is a consistency violation, uh, we could detect it uh, and we could, um, uh, we could give customer their money back. Uh, and um, you know, happy to report that uh, in, uh, since the early days of uh, early days where we were uh, prototyping and uh, using the system internally at Microsoft, we have not had uh, you know any uh, violation in the consistency SLAs um, uh, after we launched the service. And so um, there's a there's an entire system that runs uh, that also uses Cosmos DB internally and and does this um, checking of any violation, uh, both for availability uh, as well as consistency. Uh, but so this was, uh, this was uh, uh, we found in the early days that while we, while we, um, we knew that we had a robust design uh, which we had uh, uh, debugged and implemented, um, we, without uh, sort of these checks and balances, um, you know, we, we were not sure whether um, there would be any bugs uh, that would be discovered later. And so um, this system, which is an online system continuously ru running in the background, um, helped detect it and report it to customers in time. The other thing that we did was we also um, um, uh, applied a probabilistic bounded stainless, uh, which was a work uh, uh, done a few years back um, to, to give, um, uh, to expose uh, 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 the the matrix uh, to the customers in a way that uh, even if uh, customers had chosen weaker consistency model in practice, if they were getting stronger guarantees uh, for their reads, uh, we would report uh, you know uh, based on their workloads, based on their uh, regional preferences, uh, and report propagation delays across regions. So we transparently exposed all of these matrix uh, related to consistency um, to the users. But everything sort of started from precisely describing um, those uh, consistency levels using TLA plus. Um, let me switch uh, gears and talk about um, the system that I'm working on um, uh, currently for the uh, past year uh, or so. Uh, this is a globally distributed uh, AI system uh, that efficiently schedules uh, resources and it relies on uh, transparent uh, preemption of uh, long running uh, programs or jobs. And uh, one of the things that uh, we do is uh, in order to do, in order for scheduler, uh, this is a distributed scheduler and it is capable of transparently preempting any, any program at any, any point in time uh, without, um, uh, without requiring any cooperation from the users uh, or the programmers. So, um, um, this, this requires uh, taking a consistent snapshot of those uh, programs um, uh, uh, midstream while they're uh, executing and then uh, suspending uh, all of the program state um, and then resuming it uh, at a later point in time, perhaps in another region, uh, in another cluster, uh, definitely on some other machine. And here in terms of uh, resources, uh, which are being scheduled, we're talking about um, hundreds of thousands of uh, AI accelerators, uh, processes uh, running on uh, CPUs and, uh, and uh, 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 network, all of the system resources. Um, and the constraints that the scheduler has are around uh, finding the best 
uh, topology. Um, uh, uh, so whenever um, any program is uh, suspended and resumed later, it has to be resumed against resources which uh, yield the best performance. Uh, and each program has uh, its uh, e idiosyncratic requirements about um, um, how the, the, the resources are assigned to it and the topology and the placement constraints. So uh, here, uh, uh, having, having used uh, a TLA plus successfully uh, in a large team in Cosmos, we, uh, while we're starting out uh, this project, we, uh, we, I'll talk about um, you know, the, the team and the awareness of, uh, of the team on TLA plus uh, in, a in a few minutes, but um, we started out by doing all the design work uh, in TLA and uh, one of the problems that uh, we we found a very uh, interesting and a, and a novel use of uh, uh, TLA plus was that uh, uh, in an, in this example we had um, we wanted to do a consistent snapshot uh, of the program state, um, uh, which is a program is distributed across many many machines, um, and in order to get consistent cut, uh, we uh, wrote the TLA plus for Chandy Lamport. We uh, had two other algorithms uh, because we had to do a coordination um, across device state uh, or by device I mean um, GPUs and uh, FPGAs and such devices as well as uh, processes uh, uh, which were interacting with those devices. Um, uh, and while we are doing um, um, uh, the snapshotting, we have to honor the uh, programming model guarantees. For example, uh, MPI programming model requires a program order guarantees in a certain way. And we had to honor those guarantees so that the, the application programs, uh, application programmers, uh, you know, uh, intuition doesn't break or they don't have to do any, uh, anything special uh, to deploy their programs onto the system. So we tried um, two other algorithms. Um, uh, a, a tandem collective algorithm and a queued collective algorithm uh, um, to, 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 to devise an uh, efficient mechanism for doing consistent cut. Um, and what, what I learned was that uh, TLA plus, because we, we wrote TLA plus specs for all these three uh, different algorithms and, and we debugged the, the, the trade-offs. And we found that, um, you know, just by uh, uh, writing these specs and um, and it, it made very apparent in terms of the, the difficulty of implementation or maintaining um, uh, uh, these three implementations of these algorithms. And so without writing a single line of code, we could, we could evaluate the trade-off as a team uh, between the choices um, that we had and the con against the constraints that we were uh, trying to build these, um, uh, implement these algorithms. So that was uh, that was uh, uh, a great insight. It saved um, many many months worth of engineering effort because we could we could look at the trade offs and and discuss them uh, with precision. Um, and it was it eliminated all subjectivity and um, and the trade offs became very uh, clear. The other thing that um, uh, I see happening in in this project um, is that this is a this is a massive effort across uh, hardware and software teams. And we have to communicate um, the design to so many different people who have completely different context and they're working on different parts of the system. And uh, TLA Plus uh, has been helping us in terms of communicating the design to uh, teams that are not you know, directly associated with the, with the, with the, with the specific uh, subsystem. So that uh, also is um, is um, in in addition to all the things that um, I had learned about TLA in um, and its application, uh, you know, in the cultural context uh, while building Cosmos, uh, I found uh, this was useful here. A um, few things uh, I want to um, uh, you know things that have worked uh, in terms of uh, uh, applying TLA plus in a team. I found that um, uh, hiring engineers with the TLA plus background um, uh, has been uh, like when we post job descriptions, we say, uh, you know, uh, knowledge of TLA plus 
uh, is preferred or would be great. And um, this is an example of an engineer uh, um, uh, earlier this year who applied for uh, a position and he said, you know, I, I've been uh, using TLA plus and uh, shared some of his specs. And then, um, so that was, that was great because we, we could, we could tell um, that um, uh, this engineer has, has um, uh, you know, worked on these type of systems. It's like uh, reading, the, reading the code to understand the sensibilities of an engineer. Here, we could read the TLA plus spec and, and sort of uh, uh, even before the interviews. And uh, obviously, uh, um, this engineer was a great hire. Uh, he's been contributing. Uh, and uh, responsible for uh, one of the critical components, but uh, this this approach of uh, hiring engineers uh, with the background has has worked. The other thing we have done is, um, in order to um, um, spread the understanding of TL Plus within the team, uh, one of the things that has worked is uh, when we onboard a new hire on the team, we um, we have a, a team wiki and uh, we upload all the specs. So people contribute to TLA plus spec. Uh, there's a there's a, a Teams channel where they discuss uh, the the specs that they have contributed, and so um, this has also worked. The third thing um, that we have done, um, and um, uh, while Singularity is is too nascent uh, in Cosmos and other parts of Microsoft, is that uh, whenever we have an outage or a, uh, or a SLA violation. Um, uh, once the once the teams identify the root cause of the bug that contributed to the issue, we associate a, a TLA plus spec uh, with the fix, which everybody can review to make sure that uh, because it's it's high pressure uh, um, situation where we have to fix the bug in uh, in a short amount of time and making sure that the the fix is doesn't violate or introduce new correctness problems. Uh, TLA plus has been applied, uh, and I think this is documented across uh, some of the uh, incidents that have happened in Azure and uh, elsewhere as well. The, the fourth thing is uh, uh, SLAs, uh, service level agreements. A lot of services, cloud services claim uh, that they give this guarantee or that guarantee, uh, and they usually play with the law of large numbers where um, um, there is no per customer SLA, but in the aggregate, the SLAs are 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 met. Uh, so having a TLA plus spec to clarify exactly what guarantee uh, is uh, being um, uh, you know uh, is included as a part of that SLA and a precise uh, description of that uh, goes a long way. That we learned by um, using TLA plus uh, for the consistency SLA in Cosmos. So in, in, a, in a nutshell, um, um, uh, uh, tremendous value in terms of uh, upfront uh, uh, application of a TL plus uh, while designing the system, at least uh, all the critical pieces of uh, critical components and subsystems uh, applying TL plus. Uh, also uh, making a part of the model uh, engineering culture um, uh, goes a long way. And um, it has been applied, uh, TLA plus has been applied successfully in, uh, in uh, uh, not only these two systems that I described, but in Azure networking, Azure storage, uh, and many other teams across uh, Microsoft uh, and elsewhere as well. So um, thanks.